Hey guys, today I've got a video showing you how to do the steering bearing repack and inspection on your Yamaha FJR 1300. This also applies to a lot of other bikes out there, just of course with minor modifications about exactly what you have to do and the torque specs. But this is pretty much the same procedure as the retorquing that you have to do periodically anyway of the bearing nuts. It's just dropping the front end and actually getting to the bearings at this stage that's a little bit different. Now there's multiple ways to raise the bike in the air in order to drop the front end. I've got a couple easy ones here. I'm gonna show you the little more involved way and you might wanna do this if you're doing something like replacing the bearings or if you just need it up in the air for an extended period of time or if you wanna take off the whole front end clip of the bike for whatever reason, doesn't matter. But for this particular service point we don't have to do it the really involved way we can just use the jack so i'll show you the more involved way right now no matter how you choose to support your bike you need to get it on a stable surface on your fgr you've got a nice handy center stand that you can even do barefoot super easy if you don't have a center stand on your bike and by the way these instructions do apply to a whole lot of bikes out there you need to use a pit stand or other method for securing your bike, either to a, a lift with straps, whatever you have to do. But if you have a center stand, that's all you need. This is a super easy pipe stand that I showed you guys how to make for about a hundred bucks. I'll put the link up in here somewhere. Basically, this is a really easy way to support your bike virtually as long as you want to. And if I was doing something more serious on the front end of this bike, like rebuilding the forks, taking off the entire front end, replacing the bearing, something where it's gonna be up in the air for maybe a few days, maybe a couple weeks, depending on your schedule, or if you're really having to crank down on something, doing any kind of impact, you want it really secure, this is a great option. Now let me show you how to hook it up. First tip though, if you have an aftermarket windscreen, it's gonna be taller than a stock windscreen and it's probably gonna interfere. So first step would be to remove your aftermarket windscreen just for clearance. Now all we need is a single heavy duty strap. So what we're gonna be doing is taking the long end of a strap and just folding it over to make a loop. And we're gonna be feeding this loop underneath that frame spar. So the bike is gonna be cradled like this. Now it's a pain in the butt to feed this through because there's not a lot of clearance there under that frame. So what you want to do is get yourself a couple zip ties, nice and long zip ties, and just snap them together at the end to extend it. Use this kind of as a, a lead. Now it's important that you go completely above and around the brake lines and the other lines, the control lines on the other side. You want this strap to only be up against the frame. So you just feed the zip tie through and it's fairly easy. When it comes out the other end, again, just make sure that it's not in between any of those control lines. You want it completely on top so it's only on the frame. And once you've got it through the other end, feed enough through so that it's not gonna fall out. Okay, so now we've got both ends looped around. Be careful of the hook end. I put it in my pocket here just to stop it from banging on the bike. And then go about halfway down your strap, fold it in half so that you've got a loop. Put the zip tie through the loop, just tie a half knot in the zip tie to the strap so it stays. And then pull the zip tie and strap back through. Okay. Now we're done with the zip ties and we've got our strap completely cradling just the frame. So now we're going to attach it to our lift point. Okay, I forgot to turn on the mic for this clip so you guys get a voiceover. Basically I'm telling you here this is why you may want to remove your oversized windscreen to give you clearance. And we're going to put the turnbuckle, the ratchet assembly, right up in the center over the steering assembly on your pipe. And you're going to take the loop, pull it through, and grab the loop end and the hook end. Both of these are going to connect to the hook 
up top, and then the loose end you're going to put into the ratchet assembly. And what this does is turn your bike basically into a two to one mechanical advantage pulley, you know, eh, not counting friction, it's close enough. But it also helps you control descent. So when you pop that ratchet free, it's not just going to kerplunk down to the ground, it's going to give you a lot better control and allow you to ease the bike down. Now you can do the same thing on the rear. I will typically also use a second strap just so I can kind of make like a V. And that's using our good friend, the floor jack and his helper, the textbook. Works really great for putting under the headers, protects them, supports them. I need to lower just a little bit. And this is just fine for anything not super long term. Doesn't damage a thing. All right, so I got some tension on there. Now, this whole job of the bearing service is only raising the bike a couple inches. We're just gonna be dropping the front end, dropping the lower triple tree out of the frame in order to look at the bearings, look at the races, and put some more grease in there. And then we're putting it right back in. So we don't have to get a lot of clearance. We don't need to actually drop the front end or anything drastic, so this is more than enough. Now we need to remove the top plate off the top triple tree. The first thing we're gonna do is loosen these pinch bolts. You need a six mil Allen bit. And they should be in there pretty snug. If you have an A model, you can skip this step. If you have an ES, you can give yourself a little bit more clearance by peeling back these boots and disconnecting the suspension adjustment connections here at the top. It is possible to very carefully lift the whole assembly and just barely clear them, but this does make it easier in the long run, especially when it's so easy to actually remove the clips there's just one push tab and you wiggle up. Just one little push tab, so that's it. Okay, now we have to remove our center nut. Sorry I lost a clip here, but the center nut comes off with this 36 mil socket, and you've seen me do this before on my bearing retightening video. You're gonna need a breaker bar just to start it loose. This is an old torque wrench. I don't use it as a torque wrench, I just use it as a breaker bar and then it basically just spins off by hand. Take off the washer right underneath it, and then you gently just wiggle this top plate and handlebars straight up off the forks, off the steering stem. Protect your dash, protect your tank with towels, and just set this up here. It's just gonna stay there for the duration. Obviously, if you're doing something like replacing your bearings, removing your forks, anything like that, you do need to disconnect all of this and completely remove this. But for this service, this just needs to be out of the way so we can get to these bearings right here. We're gonna be taking off these two nuts down here that I'll show you in a second, dropping this completely through, and then greasing up the bottom, greasing up the top, and putting it back together. Take off this top retainer clip. This is just keeping the nuts in alignment. Just slides right off. Now, this is the only real special tool that you need that you can't get at any auto store, and this is a spanner just for this nut stack right here. Now, you can get this at any Yamaha dealer. You can order it online, and I'll put the part number down below, but I found this on eBay for about 25% of the cost. It is just a hunk of metal. There's nothing special about it other than the dimensions, so don't go crazy in my opinion. And it works by simply accepting a socket and it gives you a special little hook here that goes into the indentations on these nuts. So what we're, there are two nuts, they are butted right up against each other so that nothing moves. We're gonna remove the top one, then remove the bottom one. 
and that is going to free up our steering stem from the frame. Now our front end is still completely on the ground, so nothing's going to happen. This isn't going to drop through. What we're going to do is after we get this free, slowly jack up the bike, and it will actually raise the frame off of the steering stem. So first we're going to take these off, and they're not on there especially tight. If you've done your, I can do the top one here by hand, but if you've done your normal retightening service, you know that this is no big deal whatsoever. Take the top one off, keep these in order. There's a little black o-ring on the bottom of that one. And now we use the tool, carefully remove it, now here's where you you want to be careful because this is going to want to jerk things around to the left to make sure that your stuff is not going to be scratching anything. I'm going to reposition this really quickly because I don't want to be doing this while it's attached. Just want to make sure that the front end is turned all the way to the left. I should have done this before I took the top off, but it was a little easier clearance wise. There we go. I'm just paranoid about scratching my dash. <laughs> so now on goes the tool again. And this is going to zip right off. We just need to break the torque and then basically it'll come off by hand also. I'm just steadying this top plate in case anything jerks and watch the tool so it doesn't flip up. And there we go. I'm gonna reposition it, not quite hand loose. There we go, that should be enough where I don't need the ratchet anymore. Now we're going to take this one completely off. No o-ring on this one, so don't mix those up. Gently take off this plate seal. We're going to be cleaning all that gunk off, all that old grease. Just put it safely aside. So here's a look at a never touched factory bearing at just over 16,000 miles. And it's not bad. I don't see any signs of water intrusion. What you're looking for is obvious signs of rust. Sometimes the grease will go really milky white. All I'm seeing is, uh, I'm trying to look over the camera now. Seeing it look kind of a, a gelatinous yellow color. That's about normal for this kind of grease. So now we can go ahead and drop the front end. That is going to make this tube, the steering stem, drop through and that'll give us clearance to really inspect things and see the same thing on the bottom. As you jack this up, be mindful of the top plate just so it doesn't shift around because everything is going to come up and uh, you just don't want it scratching anything. I put an extra towel underneath here so it can rest more on the side of the bike. So just barely touching it, already freed that bearing from the race and we're starting to raise off the front end. Now we don't want to go so far that that steering stem pops out of the frame. We just need clearance under there to inspect the bearing and put some grease on it. So now we're up just a couple inches and I've got a good half inch left of stem above the frame. Everything's still in alignment. I can pull this bearing race off the top, get in there. We should have plenty of room in the bottom. So that's good right there. Now this bottom part is going to be virtually impossible for me to show you. You need to get a light and your head up in there and inspect everything as best you can. Look for any scratches, marring, 
missing grease, white blobs, rust, anything like that. If you see any of that, you need to replace your bearings. You'd probably also be feeling it at this point in the steering. Now this particular bike steers like brand new, so I don't see or expect to see anything unusual. So everything's good. Now we're just gonna put some new grease in there. We don't need to clean the old out at this point. We just need to repack it with uh, good lithium grease. Brand really doesn't matter in my opinion. Likewise with the top, just kind of move your top plate out of the way there. Focus camera, there we go. Take it out carefully. Check out the inner portion for any kind of scratches. Whoops, you guys can't see it. <laughs> Everything looks good. Check out the bearing and the races and the balls. Everything looks good. Just needs some new grease. Likewise in there. So, new lithium grease. We're going to put fresh coats on everything. I'm just going to quickly wipe that out with a little paper towel. If you needed to completely clean it, they recommend kerosene. Just be careful of any paint, obviously. And we're going to reassemble. For the bottom, I just got in there as best I could, smeared the grease everywhere, turned the balls around on the stem at the bottom, packed them as much as I could with grease, got up in as much as I could. It makes a little bit of a mess, but everything uh, will be cleaned up after it's reassembled. We're going to do the same thing on this upper. Yes, I will be cleaning off these threads. <laughs> All right. Put this guy back on. Okay, now at this point, we are ready to lower the frame back down onto the steering stem and front assembly. Kind of takes two hands to do it. You want to guide this so it's coming up straight and not catching on the bearings on the bottom or anything. Just do it very, very slowly. It'll probably jerk a few times before it pops into place. And I will note that this part certainly is easier with two people to help wiggle and guide things into place. So I'm gonna slightly relieve pressure on the jack. We should see it coming back up very, very, very slowly here. Okay, it's moving, coming down a little fast. <laughs> What we're looking for is that stem to start centering. That'll tell us that the bottom bearing is going back in correctly. It should kind of slide into place. Just want to be careful it doesn't hang up. All right. Now I'm going to check it underneath here. And it's not quite into place, so I'm going to raise it back up. Just gave it a little wiggle underneath. That set the bottom bearing. Now we need to make sure that this is gonna go on straight down. All right, now I'm gonna move the front end back a bit so it goes fully in. Then I'm gonna chalk the wheel. Just put anything under it. There's not that much pressure. So now we've got the stem fully up and we should be able to Pull it into place, get that bearing seated, get the inner part seated, and then we'll be able to nut it back down. It's really hard for me to do this with the camera angle, but we'll get it done. That's good, thanks. Okay, trying to do it alone was frankly a pain in the ass, so called in the wife for a second set of hands just to give some more leverage to get that centered. That's all it took. All she did is put a little bit of pressure right on the ends of the forks there and that allowed the tube to, or the steering stem to be straight so I could snap everything back down. Now it's fully aligned. Now I can drop it the extra quarter inch or so. So all the pressure will be on the front end there. Now it's completely off the jack. And now it's pretty much the same procedure as torquing our steering nut. Next in goes our bearing cover. Wipe this off real well and we're gonna hit the underside here with a little bit of grease. 
You don't have to go crazy. Just get all the underside of the rubber with a nice, fresh, thin coat. Slide that down. And just press it yeah, into place. Okay, it's on there nice and even. Now comes our first nut. Now the order is nut, o-ring, nut. My o-ring always sticks to my upper nut. So technically they're two parts, but if yours comes off separately, that's normal. So we're gonna hand tighten our lower nut down. This is the only one that gets torqued. So from this point forward, this is the completely normal regular maintenance of retorquing this, which this is required to be retorqued. I believe it's every four, six, eight thousand miles, something like that. I mean, it's no big deal. The only tool you need is the special spanner. You don't have to do anything with the front end. And you need a torque wrench, of course. All right, so that's hand snug. First thing we need to do is an initial tightening of 37 foot-pounds. This is to set the bearings in place and make sure everything is aligned. This is really what's critical for making sure your bearings, well, last and not doing wheelies because this is a really, really heavy bike. And when you slam the front end down on a bike, the heavier it is, the more apt you are to start notching those bearings or notching the races. Where did my torque wrench go? <laughs> I'm grabbing wrench after wrench. That's not the right one. Hang on. Okay, here it is. So this is a two-step, if you haven't seen the maintenance video on retorquing this, this is a two-step torque, but it's the reverse of what you might think. Usually when you see a two-step torque process, it's for putting on something to prevent it from warping, like a cylinder head, a valve cover, sometimes wheels, where you go once at a low value and then again at a higher value. This is the opposite. We're going to a higher value first to set the bearings in place. Then we're spinning it off completely loosening it and then retorquing down to a lower value of just 13 foot-pounds and it sits there at an operational 13 foot-pounds. So the first thing we do is use our spanner and we're going to torque this to 37 foot-pounds. Now the way you use this for actually torquing is you put your wrench at a 90 degree angle to actually set the torque. To get this close I'm just going to put it in here however it conveniently fits and when we feel that we're getting close, because it's gonna spin down a lot from the point it's hand tight to the point it wants to torque, then we'll do the 90 degree just for time's sake. All right, we're getting pretty close here, so I'm going to put it at 90 degrees. I need to make sure I've got enough clearance here. And we're gonna go until we hit the click at 37 foot-pounds. So make sure that everything's aligned and nothing's going to slip. Still have a ways to go. There we go. 37 foot-pounds. Now, we need to play the juggling game. Shift everything back over to the left because we got to take it off. Isn't that fun? Be careful. Watch your parts. Protect your dash. So now we need to loosen it. We don't need to take it off, but we need to get it below 13 foot-pounds, so finger tight. And back over to the right for the last time. Yes, this part is pretty annoying. Be careful. Watch your parts. Watch your dash. And final torque of just 13 foot-pounds. So reset your torque wrench, however yours works, and a final torquing. Right there, 13 foot-pounds. Okay, annoying parts are over. <laughs> Done with the special tools. Now we put on our rubber washer, or if it's still attached, screw this back down finger tight against the other one and what you're looking to do is align the slots and then we put in our locking tab washer on top of that and that stops 
anything from moving. Anywhere it goes, doesn't matter. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, we can straighten out our forks a little bit, carefully. Put our top plate back on, carefully. And there we go. The top plate should be flush with the top of the forks, the bottom of the big silver parts. And you shouldn't be able to wiggle it at all anymore. It's gonna sit on this center part. You're gonna have a little bit of leeway on your forks, obviously, because they can move up and down, but you shouldn't have any play in the center. So you put on your washer, and you put on your center nut. This takes a big torque of 86 foot-pounds. Turn your forks to the right and carefully torque this guy down. Be careful you apply the torque evenly so you don't slip. This is quite a bit. And there we go. Just take it nice and slow and you won't have any problems. And then we need to tighten down our fork pinch bolts. These go down to 19 foot-pounds. Use your torque wrench if you need to. But it's basically a little bit more than your average spark plug. There we go. There's one. There's two. If you have an A model, skip this. If you've got the ES, reattach your suspension controllers. They just slide on. Pop your boots back over, and you're done. Hope this helps somebody. Now you've got your factory fresh 16,000 mile serviced steering bearings. Stay tuned for more videos coming soon. I'm going through all the 16,000 mile service points. So you'll be seeing the swing arm and the drive shaft and the pivot points and the center stand and all that kind of good stuff going back through the bike soon. See ya.